Use PAP, seven hour update, 2022 through 2023, page 14, Use PAP references. Chapter two, fair housing update, critical new information for our appraisers continued. Use PAP references. Relevant use PAP references to this section of the course include preamble, lines 46 through 48. When an appraiser provides an opinion of value in an assignment, the appraiser must also comply, that's highlighted, with the scope of work rule, the record keeping rule, the applicable development and reporting standards and applicable statements. There are currently no active statements. End of page. Uh, quiz. Number one. The Equal Credit Opportunity Act specifically prohibits discrimination by... Ready, set, go. A, creditors, B, owners and sellers, C, renters, or D, real estate brokers. I'm going to go creditors. You answer correctly. So remember, the Equal Credit Opportunity Act specifically prohibits discrimination by, you said, creditors. And that is correct. Number two, under the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, if a lender relies on an appraisal that is unintentionally discriminatory, who can be held liable for discrimination? Ready, set, go. A, both the lender and the appraiser B, the lender only. C, the appraiser only. Or D, no one because there was no intent. I'm going to go both the lender and the appraiser. Good job. You answered correctly. So remember, under the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, if a lender relies on an appraisal that is unintentionally discriminatory, who can be held liable for discrimination? You said both the lender and the appraiser, and that was correct. Continue. Page 15, disparate impact versus disparate treatment. Whether or not an appraiser is following USPAP for a particular assignment, anti-discrimination laws can apply to that individual while acting in any capacity that is associated with them offering or providing valuation services, including running a business, etc. To understand what these laws prohibit, it is helpful to understand how evidence of discrimination is evaluated by courts. This part of the course discusses two methods of proving discrimination. Disparate impact, that's highlighted, and disparate treatment, that's also highlighted. This section of the Chapter will cover both types of discrimination. End of page. Page 16, disparate treatment. Title 8, compliant intake, investigation, and conciliation handbook. 8024.1. A HUD document states how the Supreme Court at one time explained disparate treatment. Disparate treatment 
is the most easily understood type of discrimination. The employer simply treats some people less favorably than others because of their race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. Proof of discriminatory motive is critical. While the reference above is to employment-related situations, the principle is what is being emphasized here. For disparate treatment to have occurred, there must have been an intent to discriminate as a leading tree tease on housing discrimination law describes housing practices covered by the fair housing act that are motivated solely or in certain circumstances in part by considerations of race color religion sex disability familial status or national origin violate the statute discrimination based on intentional consideration of any of these factors is illegal even if the defendant was not motivated by personal prejudice or racial animus the fair housing act requires that these Bases for distinguishing among people must be irrelevant to a housing decision. That's highlighted. FHEO Handbook 8024.1 HUD.gov forward slash U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development HUD. Per the interpretation of fair housing attorneys, the ASB consulted with a protected characteristic does not need to be the sole consideration in a covered housing practice for it to violate the law. Such practices can also violate the act. When prohibited considerations are one factor in the decision, but not the sole factor, although courts differ on the precise requirements, see Robert Schwem, 10-3, Mixed Motive Cases, Housing Discrimination Law and Litigation. Robert Schwem, intentional discrimination and the concept of a prima facie case housing discrimination law and litigation emphasis added end of page page 17 more on disparate treatment it is important to note that the assessment of whether an action was discriminatory does not depend on whether the appraiser's conclusions related to protected characteristics were or could be supported by data as eight federal agencies charged with enforcing non-discrimination standards have noted an appraiser's use of or reliance on conclusions based on protected characteristics regardless of whether the appraiser believes the conclusions are supportable constitute illegal discrimination the schwem housing discrimination treaties further notes that the discriminatory intent does not need to be overt 
Evidence of the defendant's discriminatory motive in a fair housing case may be either direct or circumstantial. Four examples of interpretations by the National Fair Housing Alliance of what could constitute overt and circumstantial appraisal discrimination. Please refer to their recent report. That's underlined. Regulators have recognized that discrimination can be inferred in the context from the use of coded language. Use of certain code words can be evidence of disparate treatment. Whether a code word is evidence of disparate treatment depends on the context, inflection, if spoken, tone of voice, if spoken, custom, and historical usage. Examples of potential code words include describing minority neighborhoods as crime-ridden, inner city neighborhoods, or lacking pride of ownership. Code word evidence should be carefully evaluated in its full context before drawing conclusions. Uh, here's some links to some discrimination stuff. End of page.